Good morning to this Five Property Show this morning. It's a beautiful day. And more importantly, let's talk about letting the sunshine in. This is about how to add to your home fast the value with easy summer styling. So if you're thinking in the summer about putting your house in the market or you have your house in the market or you're just generally wanting some advice um, and what to do and how to make these incremental improvements all the way throughout your property in order to get someone to pay just that little bit more than before. And because you made these incremental improvements, this is the show for you. This is a masterclass and we've taken all this information from our buyers and we've put it into text and we're actually going to talk about it today for to you and give you our expert opinion on what it takes to get that little bit of added value to your property or get that buyer just to make that commitment to come and see your property or buy your property. So on the show today, we've got Perry McIntosh. Hi, Perry. How are you? Yes, I'm great. Thank you. I'm pleased that the rain has stopped, so it's looking quite nice outside. So we might get some good activity today. I always say liquid sunshine at the end of the day anyway. That's true. So, and Jimmy Mullen as well. How are you this morning, Jimmy? Yeah, good. Thanks, Jim and Perry. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the show. So we talked about this. I mean, we talked about this. This is really a distilled um, distilled document about exactly, and, and also show as well, about exactly what it takes to get your property over the line. I mean, it's all about the things that you should be doing when it comes to summer uh, to make your property have that curb appeal. I mean, the long summer days aren't only for sizzling barbecues and seaside escapes and watching Wimbledon. They're also when your homes will look at their best. Um, everything is in at this time of year is in favour. The flowers are in bloom. The warmer weather, um, the sunny blue skies. You saw it yesterday in the East Nook. It put everyone in it. It puts everyone in a good mood. And there's still nowhere near enough property for sale in the five property market to satisfy the demand that we have right now. So tag your friends in this. Just in case, if they're thinking of selling, make sure they know about this because they've got their golden opportunity to ask us these questions live right now. And um, while finding a buyer quickly has become the new norm, everybody keeps saying that. It will sell quick, it will sell quick, it will sell quick. The most important question you should be asking is how much will it sell for? Not how quick it will sell. Anybody can sell a house quickly if you undervalue it. It's getting the right price and negotiating the right price at the end is the most important thing to you as a buyer and a seller because as a seller, it allows you to move to your next property and have extra capital to do the improvements you really wanted to do but just couldn't afford them. And as a buyer, it ultimately gets you that dream house possibly before anyone else can get it. So this is why we talk about this today. So it's the single major purchase or renovation you'll ever make in your life with some expert help in creating and dressing and evocative, evocative photography, evocative videos as well, the showcasing the best of your neighbourhood and telling everyone else further afield, you know what you know in your neighbourhood, but most importantly, the buyers outside of your neighbourhood don't have a clue what's going on. And that's why they'll buy into your property in your neighbourhood if your estate agent gets that across to them, that's what it, that's really what it comes down to. And um, so, before the grass grows under our feet, let's get on with turning your home into a red hot property for summer. Perry, what is the first thing we should be thinking about? Certainly, you need to make your house shine. You need to spruce it up a little bit. It doesn't have to cost a lot to do that either. Um, and make a swiffer as well. What's the most exciting aspect of a long, hot, and glorious sunny day? It's certainly not the housework, is it? <laughs> Nobody wants to be doing that. <laughs> But uh, you certainly do want your home to be nice. So it does involve doing a little bit of housework, unfortunately, folks, to get yourself ready yeah. to, to kind of go. Um, and I think the biggest aspect is certainly what I see. Um, and having put new windows into our property, I think when they first got fitted, the windows were really dirty and you could totally see that they were dirty. You couldn't really enjoy the view out. It was all muggy and you didn't get the, the goodness of the garden. So for me, cleaning your windows is a big plus at the beginning. Um, inside and out, I think that's really important. Personally, it's the one thing, I don't know if you know, if you agree with this, Jimmy and Perry, um, it's the one thing I see as soon as I walk into a property when the yeah. sun's out. It's, it's the one thing that the sun's out actually reminds me. Um, it's like, you know, the streaks and the windows. It's If you get that right, it's perfect. But it, ju it just takes that wee niggle in someone's mind to think, you know, it, it diverts them from what the focus should be. Yeah. And the focus should be on, is this house adequate for me? Not look at their windows, they're so dirty. Mm -hmm. Cleaning them inside and out definitely brightens up the rooms. 
definitely brightens the rooms up again. And also, but by then cleaning them, what you then do is you're brightening your room and you're showing off the dust on everything else. <laughs> so you really yeah. need to make sure that you dust everything else as well. So good dust and polish on your shelves is a, is a good tip as well. Sideboards, tables, mirrors, photo frames, everything like that. Anything that's really going to amplify a bit of shine or light, you need to just make sure that it's really sparkling. Well, we see that we see that when you go into Instagram, you've got these wee filters that have the wee twinkles. Yeah. <laughs> and you think about it, think about it. That's what you're effectively trying to do when somebody walks into your room. So mm -hmm. you've got all these different uh, the frames and the photographs and everything. So when the sun comes in and hits it, it just gives that wee twinkle, and then people go, "Wow, this is nice and bright. It's nice exactly. and chilly." That's what you're, that's what you're wanting, isn't it? Yeah, that's absolutely. Nothing. Do you see that as well, Jimmy? Yeah, I do. I say this a lot to um a lot to to families because they're they're thinking i'm gonna have to have my house like a, a show home the whole time it's on the market um so to dust it down everything like that but what we were saying we need it like that for photos then we'll try and get a viewing day where we can get everybody in and then you can go back to the normal most or the, yeah. the yeah. normal most um and then we'll get another if we need require another viewing day we'll know another viewing day after that so it doesn't need to be like that all the time, but it's vital when people, um, especially with dust, because sometimes you can even smell and taste it when you walk into a room if you haven't if you haven't done it properly, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You see that straight away, don't you, when you walk into a room, and you smell it as well straight away when you walk into a room. Is there anything else we should be talking about, Perry? Yeah, I think for me, I think it's not just about the words etc you've got to make sure that you you vacuum it as well you you can't just have the windows clean and then everything else mucky because the windows being clean as i said earlier is letting everything else come in the lights coming in and it's shining off everything so vacuuming making sure your floor is are clean because again you're walking into a kitchen especially at the moment where what we're seeing at the moment is floor to seal and tiling aren't we especially in bathrooms and kitchens yeah. and things like that so you want that to be gleaming so you really need that to be sparkly because it makes a big difference hardwood floors as well they do show dust you might not think it but they do so again it's about making sure you clean all of those and that's not just what the bits you can see it's behind the furniture it's under the sofas it's it's everywhere just to make sure that it's really nice the one thing that gets me is where does the wee fluff balls come from <laughs> You know, I don't know floors. Floors, honestly, and, and tile floors out of nowhere, this what fluff balls. I mean, how does that happen? Do you know what? I think if you've got pets, especially, you do see it, don't you think, Jim? I mean, you, you have the cats in the house with some of them, so you do see that because we've got a few rugs scattered around, and Jock, our dog. And, and I had to actually look up why dogs do this because they constantly are scraping at the carpets when they want to sit down. And it's all about from when there used to be wolves and snuggling in and hiding in the leaves and things like that. But what I've noticed when he does that, he then jumps up onto the furniture and it must get stuck in his paws. And then before you know it, you've got little spots all over the house. It's a nightmare. Do you get that with cats? I, I it's kind of, yeah, they go straight for the doors. And for some reason, they just they just scratch at the carpet in the corner of the door. And it's like, I, I want the door open. And it's like, <laughs> when, when, is this a universal thing that cats go and they, they thrust between themselves when they go out and hide in the bushes? It's Cat like they have big conferences they go online and they just actually say to each other, right, this is the universal sign for getting out a door. If it's shut, <laughs> just scratch the carpet in the corner as much as you can and your owner's going to come over at some point in time and that way we can condition every single person to know that that is a universal cat message to say, I'm walking outside. Jimmy, yours is a different story, I guess, Jimmy, because you, you've not got the pets, but you've got young kids, so they, they just create everything everywhere. <laughs> How do you my, find uh, that challenge in keeping your house tidy? My ones are d dirty handprints on the side of the door, because um, we got white doors throughout our house, so dirty, if they've, especially if they've been outside in the garden or been eating something like uh, lollies or something, you can quite easily see them down the around the the door handles as well you can see it you can almost see like um your fingerprints on there um now the, that, that, that's easy to build up over a period of time isn't it you don't you don't actually notice it and it's only when somebody comes into your house for the first time that they then look at the, the door handles and stuff like that and go oh yeah boy but you don't actually notice it because you know it's just a gradual build up yeah, um, yeah. And, and it's it's it, you just don't see it because you, it's like that nose blind thing you know how you get yeah. nose blind and it's, yeah. you know, they, they talk about it on, on the television and the adverts and stuff like that. Are you nose blind? It's like, and I'm thinking, because I said to Dillian the other day, I says, good, I, I, I spray this, you know, now and again, I spray a, 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 a aftershave or whatever it is on my clothes when I go out. And I, I keep telling her, I can't smell a thing. And she says, I smell it. 
Says that's because yeah. you're nose blind. And I'm like, and it's similar to your house, isn't it? You just yeah. get like that, don't you? But the one it's thing that really, really gets me is the paintwork. It's when you it's when you've made so much effort inside your house, and then you look on the outside and the paintwork's all flaky on the windows. Yeah. And then the cells may be rotten. And it's like it doesn't take much actually just to cut that cell out and put another cell in and then repaint mm. it. And it just looks like a perfect window again. Now I saw this yesterday at James Street. And, and it looked, you know, they look immaculate at these windows. And yet these windows have been in there for years. Mm. And because they've been properly looked after or they've been properly refurbished um, for what they're doing. So flaky paintwork is a no-no. People yeah. will notice that. So give your, uh, uh, give it a new coat. Um, reinvigorate any tired decor as well. Um, fill decorated cracks um, and decorate cracks and plaster work. That's another big thing as well. There is some sort of mentality. It's like as soon as you see a crack, it's like, oh, subsidence. So yeah. It's like, whoa, it's, it's a hairline crack. <laughs> it's like it's no subsidence. And it's been there for years. Yeah. And if you look at the home report, there's nothing said in there at all. It's just normal settlement um, we often get that feedback i mean when we obviously when we have viewings we reach out to the viewer to kind of get their feedback and thoughts in regards to the property what they loved about it etc and sometimes that will come across that they're saying oh i just uh, i really loved it but i was concerned about that room because there was a few cracks and there was a few this and it just is so off-putting and it's what we said right at the beginning of the show wasn't it it's you could add thousands just by getting a bit of decorator chalk or something just to fill those yeah. up and give it a quick lick of paint and make such a difference. And then it doesn't give questions. What we tend to find with viewers when we get feedback is that if they've got negative question, they'll then look for another one and another one and another one. Before you know it, that one thing that bothered them, suddenly 10 things bother them. And then it's a no. Yeah, it's, it is that compounding thing. I mean, you know, it is one of my best advices would be uh, think about the places that a viewer might actually look. I mean, if you went to view a property yourself, what, what's the first things you would look at? Would you look in the kitchen cupboards? Would you look in any cu other cupboards in your house? Would you look in the garage? Um, and so get them organised. Uh, I mean, bursting at the seams is never any good look, you know, when you open a door or a cupboard. Um, and, and I understand that sometimes that might be necessary because I do give the advice on the fact that if you've got stuff lying about and you can't do anything else with it and you can't declutter with it and you need to keep it, but it's just going to be quite intrusive when it's lying around when people are walking around main bedrooms and living rooms, um, then just put it into a cupboard. Um, mm -hmm. What's the worst that could happen? Somebody opens a cupboard and goes, oh, yeah, the cupboard holds quite a lot of stuff. Um, that's yeah. the positive spin on it. It is a positive spin, but the negative spin could be because I did it the other day myself and I do quite a lot of baking, as some people will know. Um, and the baking cartons are big and the Tupperware pots of things. So sometimes I'm not quite so tidy putting everything away, which drives Billy Bananas. But you can open the cupboard and then suddenly you've got like a towering inferno of Tupperware and plastic boxes come flying out. <laughs> We've got all the Chinese cartons from 15 years ago. For oh. the we still use them. I ah, see. Everybody's got it, haven't they? <laughs> it's oh, like, yeah. I might use that again. It's like, how many do we need? There's about 100 in this cupboard. <laughs> We're only using Charlotte. two at a time. Me and Charlotte's having <laughs> a ding-dong literally the other day because I would chuck a load of them in the recycling and she was like adamant that we needed them. I'm like, we need one or two, not 50. <laughs> and we're going to get a picture of the night so we can get more new ones. <laughs> so true. Um, so get the whole household involved. That's probably our top tip. Get the whole household involved in this. Start early to avoid this heated uh, moment. Uh, remember to reward yourself with a uplifting uh, summertime music. You know, put in some summertime music, refreshing drinks, um, treats as well um, um, through the process. Um, but you can stage it. You can actually stage it. I, I told somebody recently, just like, don't overwhelm yourself when you're moving or decluttering. Mm -hmm. Just do an hour a night. You know, just don't mm -hmm. don't put yourself under too much pressure to say, I've got to take a whole day off my work yeah. to do this. It's like, no, don't take a whole day off your work. Just do an hour a night or half an hour a night over a period of time to get it to get it ready for what you want to do and how you want to have it. Um, and that's all you need to do. Um, that's a really important that's a really important thing, Jim. I had that the other day. I was out with a client and he says, Right, I'm not be ready yet for her about three weeks because I've taken a week off to get the house ready. And I was like, You've taken a week off <laughs> to get the house ready. And it was like all this pressure that he's put himself under and concern about, oh, but I've got my you know personal items about and my photographs and my books on the shelves and you know, should I get rid of all of that? It was almost like the house was gonna get packed up and I was like, No, don't actually, because people want to see that it's a functioning home. 
Yeah. Yes, you don't want paperwork and things lying around, but you need to have personal items around as well. So whilst we want it sparkly clean, you still want to have it personalised too, because people don't want to walk in into a kind of sterile environment either, because that's not warming. They're not going to fuel the house. Yeah. I see Andrea saying, I've done five minutes of tidying already and she's puffed. <laughs> she's <laughs> had it. She's had it. It's like, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm at it. I'm, I'm actually out straight away. <laughs> uh, good morning, Andrea, um, for watching. If you've got any questions, everybody out there, please feel free to ask them. Um, again, you know, show us some love. Give us some loves or likes or whatever like that. We know you're out there. We know you're watching. Stick a five in the comments because we know you're watching then. Uh, that's all we're asking you to do. Uh, now summertime is here. Everyone's getting excited about the outside. It's time to turn up those summertime vibes. Um, so take a look out, a leaf out the magazine stylist book um, to bottle the essence of being in nature. Um, what's the sort of things we could do here, Jimmy? Um, you know, what sort of things we could do to have that sort of alfresco styling? What I would do is clear, probably clear your hallways of coats, boots, brollies from winter, and because they're probably all still there. I know they are at my house right now. Yeah. And replace them with um, shoes and lined jackets and like straw straw hats or caps as well. Um, That's quite a good point, eh? You know, it just gives that again that emotive sense and emotive feeling because it's in with that, in keeping with that time of the year. I think that's a, a vital one because no, right now I've got all my uh, Zara stuff because she goes to an all nursery, so that's always just by the front door just in case she needs it in the morning. But if it was viewings, then I'd make sure it's packed away. <laughs> yeah. What about, is there anything else you would think about, And you know, anything else you would recommend that anybody do? Yeah, I was speaking with a, a client with, um, recently because the property was empty and we're talking about making it feel more homely because I felt it was going to be yeah. a home that, that people move in there. So I was talking about filling up the flower, filling up flower pots and um, yeah. baskets, yeah. boxes and or beds as well. Geraniums um, are a really good colourful touch for the, you know, for, you know, of the maid or, or blooming sweet peas or anything like that. Um, yeah. I mean, classic British things, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, that's what you, that's what people, especially if a home is, empty as well you need to you need something for people to visualize and people most 99 percent of people are going to be buying it as a home so and they're going to be buying off emotion and how it makes them feel when they walk in the door so these little touches are going to be vital to the end result oh i thought people just bought a house because i had three bedrooms and two receptions and that was it <laughs> and it was stunning I didn't, I didn't realize people bought an emotion <laughs> <laughs> but it's a big thing actually and you make a really good point there jimmy because i actually i had someone that was looking to be one of our properties and i called them to book it the next day but actually what they had done the evening before is driven past the property and the feedback was that when they drove past the property and saw the outside and the curb appeal in their view it didn't work for them yeah so it's really important that you do do that it makes such a big difference i mean i know you spoke about um the paintwork on windows and things, but I think mm -hmm. even it's vital on fencing and timber as well. It makes such a big difference to paint those, but curb appeal is a big thing as well, because actually within 10 seconds of pulling up outside, getting out the car and looking at it, you've already got part of a judgment made, haven't you? How long do you think that takes guys? Cause you, I mean, you're obviously out there more than I am. Three tenths of a second and somebody's made really? it. Really? Yeah, it's almost because because we live in such a microwave society, everyone, everyone, everything's instant. It's instant yeah. likes, it's Instagram, it's, you know, TikTok, all the rest of it. People see this all the time and they're now all programmed to make quick judgmental decisions. So as soon as they see your house, um, it's it's like they, they look at all the, we're, we're quite, as, as humans, we quite look about, we look for the negative stuff first, don't we? Mm. Um, it's it's a it's a trait that we're, we're inherently, well, we probably inherit a degree from our previous previous um, uh, peers um, and we always look for the negative first so the first thing everybody does is they look for all the bad points about you know the front of the property and it's almost like they try to put themselves off before they walk in the door mm -hmm. so what you're trying to do is you're trying to turn people around so if you have got garden furniture for example sitting out the front i've seen a lot of people actually where you know they've got south facing uh, fronts of their house yeah. and it's maybe onto the road but they've still got a bench out the front yeah. um, guard bridge is a classic for that um, also, Pinkerton is a classic for that as well, and Crail. Um, there's there's various other areas, and Cooper, and and Levin, and and uh, Glenrothes, and everybody's got something in their front garden, possibly, but but they've left it to rack and ruin almost, and it's almost mm -hmm. sometimes it's overgrown and it's just no painted and it's no looked after. So therefore, I would say keep your garden furniture uh, set up, 
and, and and invest in it, possibly a canopy if you've got table and chairs out the back and yeah. stuff like that. Because uh, that just gives that beautiful feeling. And that just that summer feeling when people walk in that door. Now, when it comes to winter, obviously a different kettle of fish, um, then you just cover everything over and then you make sure it's all nice and tidy and uh, and stored away. So when you come to spring and summer again, whoosh, it's off exactly. and again you go. Um, introduce textiles is your thing, Perry. Um, and oh, the, yeah. the, you know the the, the timeless things. Uh, the, mm. the, 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 I mean, this year. What's that? What is this year's trend? Oh, for me, definitely. I mean, not everybody's into flowers and pots and taking care of them. And some people I speak to say, "Oh, nothing grows for me. Everything dies. Whatever." Yeah. But actually, it doesn't need to be flowering. And um, one of the things that I've recently done, and I've seen it with a few friends. And at the moment, we're actually getting new paneling put on our fence and whatnot. And I think we're going to do it. But you can actually get these colourful screens that you can fix to your fences as well. That really make it look like another room um our decking for instance we've cleaned it up and painted it it's the original decking from when we moved in where the expenses the cost of decking just now we're putting buying a new one on hold for obvious yeah. reasons because it's too expensive but we've painted it but you can still see the wood underneath not that great but now you can get these colorful rugs that are outside rugs that you can put down beside your your seating arrangement oh i never knew so, that oh yeah the one we've got it's like a gray and white and it's all like lovely patterns and it's just sits right on your deck and you put your little coffee table on it, your little bits and bobs around it, and it almost is like a living room outside, Jim. They're absolutely fantastic. Do you think, do you think that's, cute, that's like kind of like the AstroTurf sort of look? The AstroTurf no, material? No, it's almost, it's almost like a plastic mat. It's almost like a beach mat. You know when you were a wee yeah. you used to get beach mats? It's kind of like that resting kind of stuff. All right, um, okay. But they're only about 20 quid. They're brilliant. Yeah. You get them in B&M's home bargains, and what a difference it's made to the garden, and it just pops colour straight away and makes it feel you want to be there and sit outside. Yeah, so it does give that evocative feeling. And again, mm. we'll go back to saying it makes it look like an outer outdoor usable space for for, a, for reception. Mm -hmm. uh, what about merging indoors with outdoors and stuff like that? Do you think, you know, I, I mean, that's on the, a similar line. Do you think that's what we should be doing, how we should be doing it? Yeah, I think um, a lot of people make their decision on the garden buying right now with yeah. the pandemic. Everybody wants more space. So I think it's vital that you're, if you if you have the opportunity to make it like feel like that that you're that you're doing it and promoting that in in some way um i've been talking about it in a couple of properties that i've had recently doing my pre-launches and personal property tours one that comes to mind is um commercial road in ladybank yeah yeah the, where the sink is positioned just overlooks the whole back garden which is south facing so and then they have a slabbed area just out there you have a little grass area for the kids and it's like on the slab there, I have the summer house where the sun sets. So you could just imagine myself being there with under dishes or cooking and the families in the back garden playing or having friends around and they're in the summer house and the barbecue and stuff like that. So that's a lot more people doing that rather than going on a holiday abroad and everything like that. Although it's starting to head the other way, but it's still a big, big thing right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Andrea makes a good point there about if the house is empty, uh, then an arrangement for the garden to be kept looking nice is probably the best thing to do. You know, that's that's another thing. Um, it's often at you, you, this time of year when you do have an empty property and you've actually moved on to your next property or it's maybe an investment property you're offloading and selling on, um, then you just keep the garden up to date. I mean, because mm -hmm. within within a week, the, the, the everything's up, isn't it? The weeds and the grass yeah. and everything. Totally. I just yeah. it just feels constant just now especially in the driveways as well i don't know if you're finding that jimmy because i know you've got quite big hedging and everything but for me it's trying to keep that driveway weed free because it's monoblock and it really needs re-sanded and everything but again not got rent doing that we're just not long moving in but yeah it, it can make a big difference but i think as well as the in, outdoors indoors and vice versa wallpapers are a really good thing again <laughs> that's my thing at the moment so um our bathrooms need refitted but it's not something we want to do at the moment so we've just had new windows and that put in but what i did is we've got the plain walls and then i've got this again one wall that's got this massive imprint and again i took it from east screen because i love the way the east screens were in the bathroom you know with the big leaves in that when they yeah. had that and this is like it's white background but it's like blue sweet williams Mm -hmm. And it just looks tropical and bathroomy, and it looks like it's still taking you outside. So it's making the room feel bigger and brighter as well. So you can do yeah. it that way too. Mm -hmm. So Jim's, what about, like, Jim's like, I'm totally bored about wallpaper, and I move on. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> Where do you go for your in inspirations? Is it is it like Pinterest and Instagram? Or is that perfect sources for instant in, in, inspiration? I mean, whatever your style is. 
you know, I do, I must admit. Hashtags, do. do you look at hashtags? Like mm -hmm. outdoor living, um, summer garden styles, you know, endless ideas, you know, things like that. Do you, is that all the things that you look up and you find out what's what's latest trends or, or what you'd like to use? I mean, yeah. what, what would you do, Perry? I do do that. I, so I will do quite a lot of online looking. Um, I buy some of the home magazines as well. They're not overly yeah. expensive and they can last quite a while. So, you know, you get them quarterly, so it's not costing a fortune. But in all honesty, we've, we've spoken about this previously as well. It's, with your mobile phone sitting around too, you could be chatting about something. I'll go then onto my Facebook because we're on social media all the time. Yeah. I'll go to my Facebook and then suddenly the things I've been speaking about, you'll start to see them feeding through in your Facebook. Oh, it's, that's okay. it's, it's bonkers. That, mm. that does freak me out a little bit. But um, so lots of social media things there too. A lot of my girlfriends, I'll, I'll put kind of, you know, if they've done new ideas, they'll put them on social media too. So again, that's a nice way to share ideas and thoughts and what have you. Um, again, because again, we do the social media thing. I bought a print from um, Seaweed and stuff and, and asked each other. And then I kind of put a thank you picture up because that was my room finished and with my wallpaper and what have you. And, you know, that was getting comments and people seeing it. And then suddenly they start sharing their photos. And so it's all about really interacting with, with everyone else as well as kind of doing your own research. It's all yeah. out there. And that's quite that's quite important because that actually brings us to photography then, which is which crosses over with video now. Um, so creative photography taken by an expert brings your images to life. So if you're thinking about trying to do, you know, put your property on for yourself and you're maybe putting it on websites and stuff like that and you're doing outside of this, the top tip for us is get yourself a professional photographer. They're worth their weight in gold. They will add vibrant colours to everything you do and blue skies as well, even though it's not as good as day as you think it is. And they just make your they make your house pop, if that makes sense. All these vibrant colours. The key to successful staging is an authentic look, remember. So unless you pile uh, so unless you pile scones on a cake star as part of your daily routine, uh, stick to the scenes that reflect your life and are easy to set in the process. Um, yeah. Probably one of the nice ones for these new, because maybe someday it works on the boats and they've got their creels out the back garden. Yeah. <laughs> arrange yeah. them, arrange them in a nice, a nice setting, because it seems to be a quite a popular thing that everybody takes with creels yeah. sitting on the side of docks and with the sea in the background and stuff like that. Mm. So that's actually maybe quite a good top tip for people in the East Nuke area. Um, when it comes to places like uh, St Andrews, it might be a similar sort of theme, or it might be mm -hmm. maybe golfing memorabilia out your back garden yeah. or around and staged around your house as well. These mm -hmm. are all different techniques and tips you can use. And in Cooper, it could be farming. You know, you're not going to put a tractor in your front living room, by the way. <laughs> well, maybe a mini but, one. <laughs> I, but, or a motorbike in your kitchen. Um, I've seen that actually. I've seen that actually where people have had a motorbike in their house actually as as part of their design. Um, yeah. for for the house itself so um try these professional photographer techniques uh, for styling summer shots what are these techniques jimmy the professional photographer techniques what the what are things that you would say try out to, to someone out there uh, looking to sell their house or list their house or even rent their house this is a good top tip for people renting as well mm -hmm. i think the first one is is pretty obvious but um pick a sunny day so you can capture the sun as it shines across the, the floors, the furniture and the plants, really. Just now, sure I'm going to stop time. you right there. That is a really brilliant idea. However, sometimes if you're trying to take photographs yourself, the white balance goes out and it doesn't look as best as it should be. Hence the reason why you pick a professional photographer, because mm. they can often take two photographs on a tripod and actually merge the two of them together to get the best interior shot and also get the best exterior shot through the windows. Because as soon as you take an interior with the brightness, the white, the, the, the windows whiten out because of the white balance. As soon as you try to take the windows so you can see outside, the interior goes dark. So if you take two shots and paste them together, merge them together, you get the best of both worlds in the actual shot itself. Now, you can do that and on a, on a normal camera phone if you really want to, but it will still need the same technique on a stationary tripod, and then it will also need some lighting as well to come in to brighten up the room or possibly um, manipulate some of your settings on your camera in order to do that for... You kind of do it on autofocus, by the way. It's no possible. You have to put it on manual focus and then work it out from there. Other ones that you would advise, Jimmy? I would take close-ups in the garden, um with the foreground and focus and the background blood um everybody likes everybody likes to see flowers don't they 
you know, it is the classic where you, where yeah. you and, and you're right, it's, it is that sort of thing where you've got flowers and then you just take that photograph and you see the flowers in full focus, but you just see something in the background in, a, in sort of a blur. Mm. Um, yeah. But it just it just sets it off and it's quite evocative. Now, it's absolutely got nothing to do with the house at all, really. When you when you when you think about that, it's just flowers. Um, but it just it, it, it implants that memory and that feeling, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like when you take not only outside but inside when you take close ups of like um vases. The rain, yeah, the vases, the range cookers, if it's a high high spec one, it just oozes quality and people are like, Yeah, I wanna come and see. Yeah. Because I often look at it and think it's a vase. <laughs> 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 in a clinical sense, as a vase, but in, a, in, a, in an emotional sense, it does catch that emotion, doesn't it? It um, does. Um, what, what, Perry, what other things would you think about, you know, what are you thinking? For me, I think sometimes it's good to shoot the outside through the windows as well from the inside, so you get a bit yeah. of a depth there. Um, mm -hmm. It highlights the room and it's telling you that the room has got this view and this vision from it. I mean, we will often do that, won't we? Our professional photographer will always take kind of room views yeah. from the bedrooms, especially if you're along this nook. Why would you not? Because you've got these sea views all the time and bash rock and all, you know, so you want to be showing all that off, don't you? So it's mm. great to do that because you can see the garden beyond. Um, and the fact of having a professional photographer as well, you can get those aerial photographs. I mean, the aerial photograph we did of Inn and Park, the one that's coming on for Kirkland's, they're just stunning, aren't they? And you just, there's no other way you can get that by using somebody professionally that can do yeah. it. Um, Wait because it's so you're taking a James Street. Oh, yes. oh boy. Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. like I, I, I even blew me away when I was taking the drone footage. I was actually, mm -hmm. I just brought it up from the, and then looped right around to answer the harbour, right around to sell it, like a full panoramic 180 degree swing. And it's like, wow, this thing blew me away. Um, just just, stunning, just isn't it? so evocative. Um, you know, it's, it's it, it, sometimes it's an overused word, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Stunning. It is stunning, but those are the things that connect, as you say, because the memory is not just about what they physically saw in the house, it's everything that they felt about it. And those flowers, those views, those colours, everything like that is all rolls into one, doesn't it, on the positive yeah. feeling. Um, and the next, you know, the next thing I talk about as well is that also about getting that outside, inside and vice versa, is making sure if you've got blinds and curtains, have them fully open so that you can really see the outside. But also you can see the space that you've got inside from the size of the windows. Um, we had a client who has chosen to do their viewings themselves just because they feel that that's what they want to do, but was asking for guidance. And he says, you know, should I open all the blinds or should I do this or should I do that? And, you know, how should I do it? And so I was saying, yes, open all your blinds. Make sure that if you've got windows and doors into the garden, make sure they're clear and that you can see things through. And take the car out of the driveway, park it around the corner so when people come, they can see it spacious. It's all those things that evoke um space color brightness and emotion for me sometimes though when you've got venetian and plantation blinds and you open the slats just to cast these exotic shadows over the floor mm -hmm. it actually looks quite nice eh? yeah it does because that's why i said i said if it's a sunny day it says don't open them fully just slant them because that's nice but if yeah. it's a dark day open them fully because then you're right. going to get as much lighting as possible and if you if you're not cleaned your windows keep them shut <laughs> just don't bother <laughs> or hurry up do it beforehand and clean your windows but we do mention that anyway don't we it's yeah. the first thing i mention every single time when somebody's got a view it's like if, if they've got a, if they've got a, a maybe one of the window panes is actually blown because of the amount of heat more, more than likely what happens all the time and you know that you, you know exactly here's a telltale sign to know where the sun hits all the time in a house and um, if you see blown window panes in the double glazing it's more than likely because the sun is so intense at that area all the time that that window pane's blown as a result. So it kind of gives you an idea about where the sun's coming in. It's a mm -hmm. quite a it's quite a positive way to put on a negative, mm -hmm. uh, if that makes sense. But but to some day it's actually going to you know um, thinking about you know what what should I do without put people off. It does put people off, but you can't actually look at it like that as well. For some day it's actually buying. It's that's where all the sunshine. Uh, mm -hmm. Ones that always do it more than likely are the Velux windows, and um, because they tend to take the full whack of all the sun coming on them all the time now velux windows are quite actually easy to change you can get if you pull down the shutter there's just the lever to open the vent you'll actually see a code which it says ggl7 or something like that and you can go on and buy a kit which is ggl7 or for that code for the velux window and it's like something like a hundred quid for the kit and it actually they send you the pane they send you the ceiling kit and all you do is you get somebody to pop the actual Velux window out, you don't need to go on the outside, you can do it from inside, 
you unloose the screws, you pop the window out, you take it in, and then you change the, 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 the window pane, then you slide it back in, put the screws in again, and you close your close your window. Easy as that for mm -hmm. a for a um for one of these windows. So don't feel that it's too difficult to actually change any of these window panes because a, a a joiner could do that quite easily or a handyman. Um, it's easy, easy to do, and you can buy these kits online, as I said, for around about £100. Done it myself, um, and lo and behold, guess what? Within a couple of years, they're blown again because mm. <laughs> of the heat. The thing is, though, it's like we say we said earlier on as well, that's a very small price that you're paying that could potentially add thousands to the value of your sale and the timeline yeah. of how quickly you'll sell. I've seen people do it. It's like you've got a £500,000 house, and they go, oh, should I change the window pane? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I said, but if, if, if it's if it's going to be a hugely difficult job because maybe the ergonomics are, or or the the way of doing it is is uh, disruptive, or you can't get a contractor to do it in time, it's not the end of the world because it's easy to explain to someone that you know it only costs um, well you've had a quote and it only costs a couple hundred quid to do it. It's just mm -hmm. that time is of the essence, so you've had to get the property on the market right now, and uh, and if they want, you can just change it um, for them. Or they can just they can just change it themselves. I mean, it's a couple hundred quid. And if anybody's buying a half a million pound house and they're quibbling about a couple of hundred quid, then maybe they're in the wrong house. Um, <laughs> well, that's like walking into an Aston Martin garage. I walked into an Aston Martin garage and said, uh, "What's the price of that one?" He says, "Well, sir, if you've got to ask the price of this car, you clearly can't afford it." No, he never, <laughs> said, that. He never said that to me, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that's been a story it's told before, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's like you clearly can't afford it if you've got to ask the price of the car. Um, yeah. That means you're just trying to get more money out of it. <laughs> completely, completely. But we're so, making good points, and I think that it's really important to remember that, that the photographs are usually the first thing that someone sees, isn't it? A buyer's first mm. introduction is when they see it online or they've asked for the, the brochure or whatever. Um, so it really affects what they're looking at and what they'll do next steps, isn't it? So it's the first guide... Um, shows them whether they think it's going to work or doesn't work for them yeah. um but you don't want to leave anything to chance you know it's that's why always becomes... always always use a professional photographer because actually we had a situation with a property recently yeah. as well where a photograph was taken in the garden but unbeknown to them one of the kiddies toys was on the table and our photographer was able to just like take that out crop it out and yeah. it didn't even look at it ever been there so it's like little things that you can really make a big difference but with a professional this is why I say why video is more important now, because video actually catches people's imaginations already. I mean, could you imagine watching your favourite programme on television, but we just delivered you photographs of it in a script? Effectively, that's how a stage, a traditional estate agency is done. It's just photographs in the script. Um, but now, with the advent of video and advent of television format, it's easy to do talk-ups on properties and actually get across your message in one easy step with the right estate agent and um, you know doing video walkthroughs with music as silent movies so you yeah. know the difference between silent movies and talking pictures and how that happened and how and again i come back to saying could you imagine watching your favorite television program but not actually having anybody talking at all and just music all the way through with subtitles it's like you know you wouldn't want to watch it you'd switch off mm. that's why video talk-ups and walkthroughs are extremely important, especially to people that are cash rich. That's your buyer and time poor. They don't have the time to read the schedules and look through photographs. If somebody's got a walkthrough, which is five, six minutes <coughs> to 10 minutes, and can easily cover all that in one fell swoop for them, and then let them make a constant decision about whether they want to go any further, then that's the perfect opportunity for them. Even more important, actually getting that through them first, before actually relying on a photograph to do everything for you. Because we do talk about that on, on, on um, uh, websites, where they've only got one photograph in the front, and that's going to be the decider which actually gets somebody to click through. But could you imagine if you actually just appear with the, the video on the front? Folk are going to be more in, inclined to actually click on it and go, whoa, video, I love watching video. Mm -hmm. Even Facebook knows that. Facebook yeah. wants their whole, their whole social media format just to be encompassed with videos. Hence the reason why they bought Instagram and they ended up buying other formats as well because that's the way forward and that's what they'll reward and push out more. And that's what Google loves as well, and indexes higher as a result. And you get more traction for your property, and you'll get people to see your property who have otherwise will never, ever see them any other time. Could you imagine losing your buyer 
because they've never ever seen your property in the first place. And that could be the person that could have paid the highest price for your property. That's why video and talk up videos are so important to go in line with the photographs. Because I talk about it every time. I, I mean, as soon as I say, you know, personal property tour, and I say, if you want to see more detail, you want to see photographs and descriptions, please feel free to click on the link above or below for further details. But you can contact us in these numbers right now to get yourself sorted. Why would you need to look at videos? Um, why would you need to, to look at um, photographs and descriptions if really you've seen the whole property right through all the way throughout? You probably need to read the description, but photographs, it's just going to tell you what you've seen already. Yeah, so that's, why I, that's why I think video is more engaging, but photographs are really evocative sometimes because they're still indexed through various sources and various search engines and still gives you some sort of reach. Um, so what about flaunting the local outdoor lifestyle? How important is that? Very important. Um, it's never, never truer that in the summer months buyers want a, a wonderful local life. There'll be people that want to buy in certain villages because their family's there or they they want to come back to the area or whatever it may be. Um, what I would advise people is you work with your estate agent to include the best of your area into your description, the photography. Mm. Um, we do that with the drone footage as well, but making sure to remember the, the personal uh, favorites for the extra local insight to think about, really. And yeah, I like it is definitely that. It's a bit of a cliche, isn't it? But it is location, location, location. People yeah. want to see that. They want to know what's there. Um, and it's really important through our registration process. One of the things that we do from buyer perspective is understand what lifestyle they're looking for, because that lifestyle will match with what property we're coming to. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I've seen I've done it many times. And Jimmy, I'm sure you, you've done it as well. And I know you have, Jim, because we've talked about it. I'll take somebody to a viewing. You're talking to them. You're understanding what they're they're looking for from their lifestyle. And if I've done it on a weekend, say, um, and I've not they're like maybe the last appointment, I've actually driven them to Letham Glen. I've taken them down to Leven Beach. I've shown them where the LGS and Thistle is. I've shown them where the walks are for the dogs. And so you know, because they might not have been local. And so it's a really good way, not just for them to see the house. They then associate all of the great things around the location that tick their box for their lifestyle that then become part of the house, which then become actually the whole package works. That's why it's so important to understand that what's in your local community, isn't it? And, and yeah. to understand yeah. exactly who gives what. I mean, who has the best fish and chips? Who has the best, you know, you know where I'm talking about. It's obviously, <laughs> area. <laughs> well, sometimes some other people inland will go, oh, it's so-and-so in Thornton or it's Cooper. Or it's... But, but ideally, everybody has got the best fish and chip shop. Um, and everybody's got their own opinion. But it is, it is down to that, isn't it? And it is mm -hmm. where the best restaurants are, it's where the best coffee is, because it's a lifestyle choice more than anything, isn't it? And so, and, and then also when it comes down to where can I have recreational time, where the play parks, like you said, where the forests Schools. are. I mean, up in St Andrews, you've got Tensmuir Forest out in Gar Bridge, and, uh, and then you've got, you've got the train stations as well, where they all are. Um, so it's all this. People buy into an area because of what it can offer them, not just for the property itself. Because if that was the case, then uh, you can get a two bedroom, three bedroom in Loch Gelly. You know, you can get a two bedroom house in Loch Gelly, which is exactly the same as a two bedroom house in St Andrews. Mm -hmm. So why would you choose St Andrews over Loch Gelly? Mm -hmm. It's location, isn't it? It's location, location, absolutely. And I think pointing out that local green space, including like the little pocket parks as well for people who've got young families like Jimmy, who's he's, that would be a major thing for Jimmy, outdoor space where the kids can play, I would imagine. You know, if you've got sprawling commons or or parks like Silverburn's a big one where where we are for for yeah. walkers and and enjoy the recreation, the woodland walks that you get there. National Trust okay. Gardens, a lot of people want that as well. They might not want actually a busy garden of their own, but they want to go and look at National Trust housing and gardens. And so, where are the local ones? You know, the, the one at Tarbot, for instance. You know, that yeah. that's a really beautiful one. So it's just knowing where everything is that people Kelly can enjoy. Castle. Yeah, yeah. Kelly Castle's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, recommend anybody go there. It's just at the back on the parallel road that runs along the, the coast at the East Newt. So Kelly mm -hmm. Castle is a beautiful location. Mm -hmm. uh, Even Balburnie you... Park. If you look at Balburnie Park, if someone's looking for somewhere to walk and then somewhere to eat and they do the outside dining, it's dog friendly. It's got everything that a family yeah. would want. The Ovenson. The Ovenson's a really good place at the back of East Newt as well. It's mm -hmm. got the new burgers that they're doing, the veggie burgers, the normal burgers, um, mm -hmm. types of burgers, and the beer as well. So they've actually opened their cell, the Bow House. Um, mm -hmm. um, and then over in St Andrews, you've got all the different places over there. 
Um, mm. There's Zoe there uh, mentioning um, uh, some stuff, but Zoe up Newbra, and the, the, I mean, the, see the five coastal path up Newbra, it's up, it blows me away. And it's like uh, Newborough is a really undiscovered area. It's very rare because no one from further afield goes. The more, more than likely go Newborough. What's Newborough? Well, Newborough's mm-hmm. got a local vicinity. It's easy commuting distance to Perth, um, and you can almost get into Perth quicker from Newborough mm-hmm. than you can living in Perth itself. Work that one out. Like, yeah. I, I mean, Andrea lives in Perth, and she says it takes her an hour to actually get into Perth because you, you know parking's terrible. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, often that's a, a really lot of things that uh, you've got to consider. And um, there's also things like the streams, the lakes, the reservoirs, like I talked about. Um, you've got the boating, the fishing. Um, you've got the ponds, the open water sports, open water swimming. A mm-hmm. huge thing right now, isn't it? Yeah. You've got all these different tidal pools. You've got the St. Monin's one. You've got the Pit and Wim one. You've got mm-hmm. the um, Answer the one. Um, you've got the Cellar Dyke one. So the Answer the one is right next to the... Um, open water swimming at the Antra next to the um, uh, sea rescue boats. So mm-hmm. it's the RNLI centre. So right in there, there's a... I mean, I go down there often, and when you're walking along there, there's hardly anybody on that strip of beach. And yet, yeah. that's a brilliant place for open water swimming, and yet you yeah. hardly see anybody sitting there. And, and then it's the sun all day long. Mm-hmm. But look at Leaving Beach. It's so beautiful when it's long, and it's rare that you see them. But it's interesting, um, one of the ladies that I've kind of become connected with Louise from Louise Turnbull Arts and Paintings. She, she's recently moved to the area and she's part of a, a women's outdoor swimming club now and often see her down the beach doing the swimming. And it's all about those lifestyle choices coming to an area and all the things that you yeah. can connect with, isn't it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, Jimmy, inland as well, you've got Glenrothes for golf courses, you've got Ladybank for golf courses. What, you know, that's your thing, isn't it? I mean, you know, some of these golf courses must be amazing. Yeah, Lady Bank. Um, I think it's got Lady Bank is where I play my golf. That's got, I think it was all maybe this week actually, um, senior open qualifying. So that just tells you how good that is. And it's previously, yeah, Lady Bank has become an open qualifying golf course, hasn't it? It has been in the past, but now it's a senior one. Um, you have Glen Rothes, Balburnie, it's a good, good inland course. Thornton's, um, a pretty good inland course. There's so many things to to do Falkland's got a, a thriving tennis club um I know that even Cooper's got the all the football clubs I know Octa Mukti's even got a young um a really good young up and coming football clubs as well that a lot of the kids and my friends kids go to so there's horse riding uh, horse riding's a big big thing in the in the in the east area east of Fife it's a yeah. big yeah. thing. There's a lot of places you can actually take your horses about. Inc- incidentally, in leaving on the Kennaway Road actually is one of the only places I know that instead of having the Pelican crossing as a man, it's got a horse. Yeah. It's 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 actually got a horse instead. You know how you get the bike sometimes? You get the bike mm-hmm. and the man and mm-hmm. all the rest of it. You've got a horse. <laughs> it's actually well, there's great riding school up there, isn't there? Because people go up the back and then they go mm-hmm. up the back of uh, the back of the um, distillers, Diageo. But people know I was going to say DCL, but that's shown my age. Yeah. <laughs> DCL, United Distillers, Diageo. I kind of mind all the different names it's got um, over the years. Um, but you got the back of there towards the uh, towards Kennaway and down by Windigates. You've got a huge mm-hmm. uh, circular uh, area, which is actually all going to be re- revitalised and regenerated in in the in the uh, lead mouth blueprint and mm-hmm. um, so that's another thing to look forward to in the area i think as um, well like not just activities though you've got the five co- i know five coastal path harbour <laughs> title field <Yeah. laughs> but you know we've, we've got the five coastal path but actually one that i came across last year and um, when i was exploring at the back of kenny was the pilgrim's way and mm-hmm. there's a beautiful stunning walk around there it's unbelievably gorgeous and peaceful and quiet and you come across an old fishing um what do you call them again where it's like private fishing can't remember now. Oh, but the yes, reservoirs. Well, yes, I uh, up there. Yeah. There's like a private fishing as well. So there's, loads there's, nice stuff. there's loads of reservoirs outside, oh, fight, uh, inside fight. I, I can't believe the amount of places. And it's all these wee different nooks and crannies that you mm-hmm. don't realise. Yeah. Like, that's, why I, that's why I keep saying in my videos, "Welcome to God's country," because mm-hmm. literally, literally, I would defy anybody else in the world that's watching this right now to say that they've got something better. And I'll show you something even better in Fife. It'll blow you away. Mm-hmm. It is stunning. It's a beautiful place to be. We're very blessed. At one point in time, I remember counting the number of golf clubs in Fife and, and golf courses. And I don't know if it's true, but I'm sure it was 50. Oh, yeah, probably it's more. It's like, it's like what? 50 golf clubs? That's mental. It's probably Jimmy, more this than is a fact you should know. 
Look at yeah, it's probably will join me more. Look at Dumbarney uh, Links. I mean, eleven million pounds private funding for Dumbarney yeah. Links, um, just along the coast. I mean, it, that is an amazing golf course. I did some drone footage when that first opened, and it was like, wow, that's spectacular. Um, and 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 it's it, it is a it is a really um, good course, and and, and I think it does a lot of open, a lot of qualifying golf courses also, and it's on the circuit as well for I think it was the Scottish Ladies um, Open as well. Um, Jimmy, yeah, had, you know, does that, that ring a bell? They had that recently. I know they they want to want to get tour events there, but recently at a Fairmont in St Andrews, they had open qualifying there on Tuesday. So yeah, I would say. I say this to a lot of my friends down in some originally from North Devon, but I think Fife, not only for, for golf, but in terms of everything, such a central location. You can't live anywhere better than Fife when you think about you've got everything that you need here. You don't actually need to leave Fife, but if you want to, Edinburgh, from, from where I stay in Cooper, has an hour, then Glasgow, and probably an hour and 10, Aberdeen, an hour and 10. Just the best place to live in the world. Uh, you're absolutely right. It's probably because when you go on the two bridges, the two bridges go right down the A92, and the A92 then goes right through right through Fife, and then you're out. So unless you're physically going into Fife, then we kind of we're quite we're quite privileged in the fact that we get a lot of peace and quiet because mm -hmm. we've not got all the different roads that have to come through Fife in order to get somewhere else. Um, we're actually if you're if you're if you're just taking a shortcut, you just go one road and that's you out again. Um, yeah, so exactly. we're actually quite privileged to that point. But then obviously the downside of that is tourism. It's like we've got to put our message out there all the time and say this is why you want to live in Fife. And I think yeah. that's why important. Uh, that's why it's important to do a lot of video and actually push that out to a wider audience because mm -hmm. it encourages people uh, to come um, um, and bring prosperity to Fife. Yeah. It's bringing prosperity to Fife. If somebody's, you know, selling up in Glasgow or Edinburgh or London and they want to come to Fife to live with their family, they're bringing a huge amount of money that they're wanting to invest in Fife and actually mm -hmm. spend in Fife as well. And they can work remotely as well. So that, and again, that brings brings everybody up. And that's a rising tide lifts all ships. And I think that's why it's quite important, albeit um, we need to build more houses in Fife. We all know that, you know, restricting supply, social yeah. housing, affordable housing needs to be built in Fife. We need more of your listening, Nicola Sturgeon, and the rest of them. <laughs> and everybody, even the Green Party, Patrick Harvey, get houses built. Didn't bother focusing on anything else, but just get the houses built instead of moaning about it all the time. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> that's my that's a different show. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, let's talk about the final thing we want to talk about. Um, we've talked about recommendations all the rest of it. Uh, Staging a smashing summer viewings um, with up to 16 hours of daylight in summer, it will start to move down. I said to Aline last night, it's getting awfully dark now, and it was half 11. <laughs> <laughs> it shows you. Because uh, normally it is a wee bit lighter, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you can expect more viewings in the evenings after work rather than mainly at weekends, uh, as well as a customary visual sweep and tidy round. Focus on activating the senses of your viewers with the easy breathe atmosphere. Okay, so a couple of windows securely open at opposite ends. Make sure you've not got a door. Mm -hmm. I, I fell and fell of this. Make sure you don't have a door. It's, it's, it, it closes because of that wind and maybe has glass in it because that can actually happen in the glass shutters. Um, yep. so, you or know, you lock it, yourselves out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's good to have a, a breeze all the way throughout their house. Um, if it's a bit warmer, definitely, especially upstairs. Um, also take into account things like uh, maybe the outside noise. So if you think it's going to be noisier, then it might actually be more beneficial to close the window. It might actually be beneficial to close the window when the person's there, so you show them how quiet it is once the window's closed. Yeah. That's a real good top tip. It's it like is. a lot of people next to a road go, it's awfully noisy, and then you just close the window and they go, wow, can't hear a thing. Mm -hmm. So that is a really good one. It is, but I think when you talk about the blinds and curtains as well, though, Jim, I think you need to, depends on the day where that is. So if your viewers are not happening until later on in the day, I would t highly recommend you keep the blinds and curtains closed throughout the day, then only yeah. open them, because if it's a beautiful sunny day, they're going to come into a hot, stuffy house that they're going to think, oh, oh I don't like this, it's too stuffy, and you're, you're not going to get that feeling. But then that also comes back to about the fact that, you know, you open them all up and harness that sunshine Correct. and let it flow through all the area as well. Yeah. Um, Leave a tray of glasses and a jug of iced lemon or cucumber water out uh, for your viewers to cool down when they step inside from the heat. That's, that's another top tip. 
That's, that's a quite nice a good one. one, actually, isn't it? That is a nice one. I've not had that done that before. Mind clean your glasses, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not Don't talking about the ones. I'm not talking about the, the ones in your head. <laughs> it's like one of the one of the most difficult things if you pick up a glass and it's got a mark on the rim and you're like, no, it's all right. I'll just leave it. Oh, I know. I don't like that. Uh, create a relaxed atmosphere um, uh, and an environment by browsing uh, for browsing by with laid back summertime playlist or maybe a discrete volume. That's a that's a really good one to do. Maybe yeah, just is- common music, no rave culture. We're not wanting the <laughs> rave culture in the background. Yeah, know, it's not rock band. That's a no no, just a you know, um, lovely day. You know, <laughs> you could hear the music just flowing throughout. Um, all these sort of things that make a fundamental difference to people's mindset. Quite evocative. I mean, you get the relaxing playlists on people on things like Spotify and Amazon Prime, mm. um, and all you know, you get a relaxing playlist now on uh, Smooth Radio. That's a really good one. Smooth Radio is quite good. Um, Unless it's really Smooth relaxing. Scotland is great. So that's a good one to use as well. Create that relaxing uh, environment for browsing. Infuse your home with natural fragrances, a well-placed uh, uh, vase of freshly cut flowers uh, and uh, uh, to uh, for a single, uh, maybe a, 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 re, a, a reed diffuser somewhere as well. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things I really like, and I keep promoting it all the time, is um, the, you know the gel packs that you get out of home bargains, like three of them yeah. for like, 79 pence. I don't know if there's 79 pence now with the cost of living. Um, it might be a pound. Um, but I tell you what, they're worth their weight in gold because then you just stick them down, put them at the back of the doors. I was round at somebody's house during the week uh, and I said to them, beautiful house, love it. The only thing is, now and again, I get a quiff of the boots and the coats when you walk in the door. Um, mm-hmm. So just stick a, just stick something at, a, 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 something at the front door like uh, a lavender. Go for the ones that are quite evocative. You can see them on the adverts on the television. It's like the cotton smell. It's the lavender yeah. smell. It's the it's all these things that you know. You know the comfort and Lenore ones. Yeah, like, that's what you're after. They've already done that. They've already done the advertising marketing for you with these smells. They've already told everybody and programmed everybody that that is summertime and that is relaxing and lifestyle and fresh. That's what that that's what that smell comes across as because they've socially conditioned us through their advertising to do that. So you could capitalize on that millions and millions of pounds worth of advertising to program people to think that way as soon as they walk in the door. Pavlo's dog. That's all I'm saying. Look up. <laughs> all about programming and conditioning. When you ring the bell, it's like oh, oh food time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's effectively what we're doing, isn't it? Yeah, effectively it is. It is, but it is actually summer. It's simply the best season for leaving your house to be sold and get a really good agent. You go off and have a nice evening with your friends. Take the kids on a play yeah. date. Go for a picnic. Have a nice meal. Leave your agent to get on with it, and uh, let them take care of everything for you. It's always a good thing. That's it. And that's us. Final words, Jimmy. Um, mine would be everything that we've discussed is when you get an agent out. I've done this. On, on Wednesday with a client, we chatted everything through, decided that they were going to sell, and then we did a walkthrough of the house on how we're going to stage each room and if if what, what needs moved out of each room to declutter and get the house presented the best we possibly can for the viewer. Perfect. Uh, Perry, you, what would you say? For me, it's about brightness, it's about colour, it's about smell, it's about clean lines and showing that it's a home that functions in many different ways. Yeah, absolutely. It's these tiny little touches that can add so much value. And we are here to help you through every stage of selling your home. It's advice, guys, at the end of the day, that's all you need. I'm going to leave the final words with Andrea. Sell your house before your son becomes a stinky teenager. (laughs) (laughs) and we'll see you next week for the Pride Property Show bye bye for now bye from them (laughs) up and down up and down